Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Restroom Off The Cuff. Today we have a really cool review for you from the brand Mark & Sons. Uh, Mark & Sons of course comes out of Germany, they were established in 2007. Now they are a micro band um, featuring many different uh, styles and uh, different types of automatic movements. Uh, so really cool brand, uh, we featured on the channel a few times huge value proposition and I think this might be kind of their most uh, all-out <laughs> watch they've ever uh, produced because I mean it's just fully loaded uh, the whole nine yards so uh, let's go ahead and get into the type of watch this is first of course this is a dive watch um, when you're looking for a dive watch some key common characteristics and design language you're gonna find are water resistance through some type of screw down crown you want to want something tough legible dive time bezel and some sort of diver's extension if it is on bracelet. Now this particular model, um, you know, Mark & Sons, they don't really name their uh, watches. So this is the automa uh, the Professional Automatic Diver Watch Reference MSD029-2S. And uh, that's all the way down to the specific color code. Now the uh, retail price for these is, you can get these for uh, 453 uh, Euro without VAT to the US. Um, I know the conversion rates always fluctuating so I didn't even want to attempt to give you guys a US price on that but um, you know depending on what the conversion rates are this is actually still a pretty outstanding deal um, on the high or low end of that. Um, so let's go ahead and get this in hand and take a closer look. Alright so as you can see very striking watch. Um, it just beautifully designed, uh, I think, uh, really well executed here. And you can see that the finishing is actually quite nice. Now, one of the things that I think is a real standout is this bevel here. Look at that bevel. That is just quite outstanding, and especially in this price range to have a case that's just finished so gorgeous is a real feat um, and just adds a lot of great visual interest to the watch as well as really a certification of um, you know outstanding uh, work as far as the finishing goes so as far as specs go, now that's one of the things that's a bit misleading about this watch and I'm hoping this video will help clear this up because honestly when I looked at the specs I was a bit disappointed as far as the dimensions went. Now this watch is actually, um, you know, it's advertised as a 44 and a half millimeter watch and, but that's including the crown guards um, and it's across the widest point so it's counting this piece that's out here that's very, you know, uh, Nautilus-esque uh, as far as that shape goes all the way out to this side. So that, that's the widest point. That's the part that makes this a 44 and a half millimeter watch. Now, nobody else really measures cases like that. A lot, often you, the case will be measured, you know, um, diagonally kind of like this here from here to there because you're not, because that's really the width of the case versus the width at the widest point um, so uh, I, hopefully this will help kind of clear that up and it'll help maybe give a couple people more of a chance to wear this I think if you're looking for a big watch you're gonna be very satisfied if you are but I also want the people who are maybe thinking this watch might be too big for them and might be too overpowering to know that this is actually a very reasonably sized dive watch um, so um, basically, it actually wears more like a 42. The bezel width itself is about a 42 and a half, um, but I'd say the case, like, you know, if we were to measure it here to here, is actually um, definitely closer to 42 millimeters. Now, the thickness is actually 13 millimeters, which it wears really nicely because of that multi piece design there. Nice thin mid case. Um, nice pronounced crown and then nice case back as you can see there that comes out a little bit versus kind of one big slab it's actually compartmentalized well which uh, adds to the mist you know kind of the uh, 
the illusion of a little bit more thinness than, than is actually there. Now, again, standout is the bevel. I mean, brushed and polished case, bevel, gorgeous, on point. Look at the light. It's dancing. You're loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> All right, so this is... Uh, the, the crystal is, of course, sapphire. It's domed with inner AR coating. We have a 120-click unidirectional rotating bezel. Even in these gloves, great action. Nice and tight. Nice and clicky. Lines right back up there at the 12. Now this is fully loomed, which is absolutely outstanding, which you'll see here uh, when we get to the loom shot. Um, and it is a ceramic insert. It has a screw down crown, which is signed very boldly with the initials for Mark and Sons. <laughs> Lines up great, and that's why I say it's very bold. It's a tough choice to make uh, a crown, basically, that has something written because there's a right side up. And there's a wrong way and if your crown is it being produced you know to a high level of precision um it's not going to read correctly and you know even my oris aquas uh there that crown doesn't line up uh as good as this this very clearly perfectly flat lines up i think it's nice if it lines up or has maybe a quarter turn left in it so you don't have to tighten it's super tight but this one actually lines up just about perfect so the movement inside, again, uh, you know, going with the all, you know, checking all the boxes nature of this particular timepiece, it's a 2824. And uh, so you're getting the original. These were very scarce not too long ago. People were paying, you know, big bucks to get variants of watches, special editions, limited runs from micro brands that were offering 2824s. Now they're becoming more abundant again and more available. And you know what, uh, Mark and Sons isn't marking up their prices. <laughs> you know, they're, they're actually still quite reasonable uh, as far as pricing goes with a, with a real 2824, which is really, really nice. Now, the case back is solid and etched. As you can see, very simple, very nice, very sharply done. Nice little two-tone there with the matte finish and the machined. Okay, let's go ahead and get back up to the front. You're gonna have that beautiful gradient dial. Hopefully the camera can see that. You're gonna go from um, a navy blue to a deeper blue, almost black color there, which I think adds a great amount of visual interest and uh, really just some dimension to this dial. And, and of course is imitating kind of, you're going deeper into the water um, so it's, it gets a little bit murkier, right? <laughs> the darker and deeper you get. So I think that's a really nice feature of the dial. It's nothing crazy. They didn't make it to where it stood out. It's definitely something that is very subtle. Um, and that's something that I can appreciate, especially when you're coming out with a dive watch in this scale, which is definitely large and in, in your face. Um, and, and again, I don't consider this oversized. I do think it's, it's a large, Full, it's, it's a full-size dive watch. It's not a medium-sized or small dive watch. It's a full-size dive watch, but it's definitely not extra large. So it does have beautiful applied indices, as you can see. And one of the cool thing about this dial is it, again, they pull out all the stops. Not only does it have applied indices, it has a sandwich dial. So you can see the uh, markers at the 12, 6, and 9 applied. And then all the other markers there are inset because it's actually a sandwich dial. So those are cutouts and then there's actually, you know, a loomed uh, disc area underneath. Absolutely great. Then we have, uh, of course, the date complication at three. They didn't put it in some weird place or anything like that. Try to sandwich it in somewhere in between the four and the five. Make it crooked. No, nope. they put it right there at the traditional three o'clock position and they framed it beautifully really nicely done there and then of course these beautiful polished hands and everything is drenched in bgw9 super luminova so this thing is a quite a torch when it comes to loom which uh, we'll get to towards the end of the video here but um 
Uh, of course, if we didn't cover yet, if you haven't figured it out by looking at the dial, this is 500 meters water resistant. Um, it has 22 millimeter lugs. It's a 15 millimeter lug to lug, so not too long, but it does have a nice slight slope to it there, which helps it wear really nicely. It has a 22 millimeter width there, which tapers down to 20 millimeters. And then you have this really cool um, machined clasp which, you know, checks all the boxes. It's got it all. Really cool ratcheting system there. Really popular, um, but this one, I'd say, goes a little bit of the extra mile because it does have some other contours here, and it does have micro-adjusts, which is tough um, because uh, even though, it, you know, you can adjust, do a couple of fine adjustments here, you know, it's not always going to look as nice. You know, nobody wants to necessarily have it open like that or even with just a couple of clicks. It's going to be less symmetrical and whatnot. It's going to have things to catch on. So it's nice to have actual dedicated micro adjust holes to really dial in a really nice fit. And especially with a watch that's, you know, this heavy and substantial, you're going to want something that's going to fit you really nicely. Now, again, with the all the checking all the boxes guys look at that screw pins screw pin links solid solid everything solid i mean again just hitting all the marks so let's go ahead and get this on all wrist. right on wrist you can see where it's really nice right i mean it's not overpowering oversized it's a it's a dive watch it has wrist presence you can feel it on your wrist you can see it up close even where watches look huge it doesn't look that big on my seven and a quarter inch wrist definitely fits the contour as well very comfortable even though it's a large watch really impressed with mark and sons on this piece so let me give you guys a couple more angles there as you can see the light really just plays so nicely with the bevels. I mean, the, the case finishing is really at such a high level. Um, it's, it's, it's tough to figure out how they're able to offer it at these prices. And then the complication of, you know, a sandwich dial with applied indices, with BGW-9, with an ETA-2824, with ceramic uh, bezel fully loomed. I mean, it's just nuts. Ratcheting clasp with micro adjusts, everything solid, screw in links. I mean, it just goes on for days. So let's go ahead and get this in some loom shot action. All right, let me hit the lights here. As you can see, just outstanding. I mean, that is just blasting away. This thing is a loom beast. And it's not a loom beast with C3 either. It's a loom beast with BGW-9, which makes it, I mean, that much more impressive in my eyes. Uh, the application, just fantastic, nice and thick, and then extremely consistent um, when it comes to just uh, the, the level of the loom. You know, although the hands and the indices I mean, some are applied, some are sandwiched. They all look very even with each other as far as tone goes. Of course, now in the uh, the bezel insert there, it's not going to be applied as thick. It's just you, you just can't do that um, when it comes to uh, these types of bezels. Um, it's just tough, but I mean, still really beautiful. Still has that beautiful blue hue. Let's go ahead and get some low light transition here. All right, as you can see, in low light here, you can you'll notice that it the watch isn't a super bright blue. This is definitely a really nice subdued navy blue. From a distance, can come off as looking black. In low light, can definitely appear black, especially with that faded gradient dial. So it's nice and subdued, not overpowering. The 
presence of the watch is in the steel and the metal and the material, the ceramic, the sapphire. It's not in the loud color, or loud design, as you can see there. The camera's trying to adjust, get the blue levels and the white levels all back on track there. So while the camera figures out <laughs> the tones of everything, uh, let me give you some more of my final thoughts. I mean, this is really great value for money at just under 600 USD. Um, depending, of course, on the conversion rate, it's gonna be a little bit under 600 bucks. Um, it has a ceramic bezel, BGW9, four hertz movement, you know, which means eight ticks a second versus uh, the six ticks you'd get, you know, with something like a Seiko NH movement. You're getting 500 meters of water resistance. Um, you're getting that, you know, of course, that awesome helium escape valve, which is integrated into the case nicely in a beautiful design, I think. Um, sapphire crystal, solid bracelet in every way. Uh, solid end links, you know, screw links together. It's just really well done there. Um, fantastic clasp. And then it's made in Germany. Um, so, of course, made in Germany doesn't necessarily hold the same connotations as something like Swiss made. And not because the Germans don't make things as good. It's just that there's actually a lot less regulation involved to say that something was made in Germany versus saying something Swiss made. So there's a lot more stipulations around Swiss made that there are for made in Germany. But the fact is, is they do a great job finishing on this watch and it can give you you know, a nice warm and fuzzy feeling where you're gonna spend over $500 on a watch that it's well put together. Um, and made in Germany is definitely, some, if you want something that's gonna be well engineered, made in Germany is, uh, it definitely checks that box. Um, so some, I mean, really the high points are that fantastic case finishing, uh, finishing, and then the, uh, it's just feature wrist, uh, feature rich. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, um, it's, it's just extremely feature rich. Um, and if, of course there is a trade off, some of the cost of it being so feature rich is going to be some design originality that it's going to be lacking. It, it is a bit derivative. Um, it's, it's not looking like it reinvented, uh, the dive watch game, but I think it kind of reinvigorated Mark and Son's, uh, design for dive watches. Cause I think this is a great platform they've put together and I'm a big fan. They have tons of different model variants for this one. They have black, they have burgundy, they have a white dial with a black bezel. And then they have um, also for every option, there's even an option to have a, an orange minute hand. So you can have this blue with an orange minute hand, which would look great. Um, you could have it with the black, the white and all that. And then there's different strap options. They're really making this piece highly customizable, which I think is really cool. Now, as far as comparable models go, it's so competitive in that $500 to $1,000 micro brand dive segment. I mean, it's tough to throw anything out there, but of course you might think Steinhardt or Christopher Ward. I'd say this is somewhere in the middle and it's somewhere in the middle in pricing as well. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive than a Steinhardt, but a little bit more original. It's gonna be a little bit cheaper than a Christopher Ward, but a little less original. Um, so. That's kind of where it is in my eyes, and I think it's uh, still a great value and a great choice. If you like the aesthetic, you can definitely be rest assured in the build quality and the finish that it's going to be really nicely done. Um, you know, bottom line, it just checks all the boxes. You know, when you're if you're looking for a chunky yet classic modern automatic dive watch, I mean, this is it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do hit like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Make sure to also hit that notification bell as well. Thanks, guys. Bye.